By this video, we're going to do a basic config with uh, sub-interfaces on a router going to a switch with multiple VLANs. And so, I'm not going to do anything special, just the, just the basics here. So we're going to do a 2901 router. We are going to put on a 2960 switch, and we'll start with that, and then maybe add a host later. All right, so we'll connect our cable to Gigabit Ethernet 00, and on the switch, we're going to go to Gigabit Ethernet 01. I'm going to fast forward the time, make sure our devices are booted up. Okay, let's get started on the router. So I'm going to jump right in. I'm not going to do any of the basic configs. I'm not going to do the host name, you know, passwords, any of that kind of stuff. Um, so we're going to jump right in with interface G0 slash 0 dot 10. That'll be our first sub interface, but of course you have to go into config mode first. And then we can go ahead and do interface G0 slash 0 dot 10, which will be our first sub interface. Uh, we're going to set the encapsulation type to dot 1Q, which is what you use on a Cisco interface for doing the router on a stick config. And set this to VLAN 10. That 10 is our VLAN number for this sub interface. And then we'll set our IP address. For this lab, I'm just going to do 192.168.10.0, or I'm sorry, 10.1 with a slash 24 subnet mask. Let's make that window a little bigger. All right, then from here, we can jump right into another subinterface. Quick way to do that is just to use the up arrow a few times. We'll go to subinterface.20. Again, I'm gonna use the up arrow to set the encapsulation type to 20 for VLAN 20 on the subinterface. And we'll set the IP address to 20.1. Notice that goes real quick. When you use those up arrows, you don't have to retype all those commands. We'll go ahead and do a third. So dot 30, set our encapsulation to 30 for VLAN 30. And then we'll also set the IP address on this one to 192.168.30.1. All of the slash 24. Now I want to do one more. This one we're going to do, we're going to do dot 99. Because what we're going to do on this one is set our encapsulation to 99 for VLAN 99. But then we're going to put a extra parameter on there to make that the native VLAN as well. And we'll still set an IP address on that. All right, now one last step that we you may have noticed we haven't done yet. We need to go back to our interface G0 slash 0, which is the, the main interface, not the sub interface, and do a no shutdown. And you can see what that does, it brings up all of those sub interfaces up at one time. Now keep in mind, if I wanted to, I could still go back to individual sub-interfaces and do a shutdown. Um, but, but doing the no shutdown, the primary inter interface brings them all up at the same time. So now with this setup, you'd have a router on a sticks config, the basics anyways. There's a lot more you'd probably do if it was a production router. But you have the basic config to set up routing between VLANs. So now I would have inner VLAN routing for VLANs 10, 20, 30, and also 999, which is the native. Let's do a show IP interface brief to make sure that all those are up and we have the correct IP assigned on each one. So that would be the bare minimum config you would need on your router to do inner VLAN routing. Okay, let's jump over to our switch. And if you remember, we connected our switch on port G0 slash one. So we're gonna have to go to that one. Again, I'm not doing any of the basic config stuff here. I'm just going right to the Settings I need to do for inner VLAN routing, uh, to config T, we'll go to interface, it was G0 slash 1. Now, routers do not support DTP or dynamic trunking protocol. And so what you have to do is set your switch port to trunk mode. No dynamic trunking, just got to go right into the forced trunk mode, so switch port mode trunk. And that that's all you would need. One, other thing I'm going to do though here is go to interface, we'll go to G, I'm sorry, F0 slash 1. We're going to do switch port mode access, and then we'll do switch port access VLAN 10, which that VLAN did not exist, but it goes ahead and creates it for us. We're going to set port 2 to VLAN 20, just again using those up arrows so I don't have to retype everything. We're going to go to port 3 and set that to VLAN 30. And 
Um, one last thing that we didn't do yet that is kind of important is we didn't set the native VLAN on our trunk. So we're going to have to go back to interface G0 slash 1 and do our switch port trunk native VLAN 99. Since that's what we set up on our router for that sub-interface, you want to make sure we do the same on the trunk. All right. Now, if I do a show IP int brief here, normally you don't have a lot of stuff configured, but you should see that the interfaces are up. The one is up here going to the router. Now, there's nothing up on ports 1 through 3x. I haven't hooked up any PCs. Another thing we can do is a show interface trunk, which tells us that it is trunking. It's on VLAN 99, and right now we're allowing all VLANs to use that trunk. All right, well, let's go ahead and add a few PCs just to verify that our config works. So I'm going to add three computers here. And hook each one up to... Okay, I didn't want to do that. We're going to switch the order here so we can keep our PCs in order. Oh, wait a second. Where, where do I connect this one? No, oh, never mind. I did that right. So that's port one. This is port two. And I want this last one here to be on port three. So we'll have VLANs 10, 20, and 30. Now, one thing. There's a couple ways we could do this. One, we could just set a static IP address on each PC, or we could set up a separate DHCP pool on our router for each VLAN. And I'm going to go ahead and go with that DHCP option on the router. Um, but if you want to verify your config here, all you have to do is go ahead and assign each computer a static IP address from their perspective VLAN. So for example, PC0, you could do 192.168.10.5 with a slash 24 subnet mask. You can do 192168 uh, 20.5 with a slash 24 subnet mask on PC1. You keep, you know, like that, and you'd be able to ping between those. So I'm going to do a quick demo here of doing a um, DHCP pool. So we're going to do IP DHCP pool VLAN 10. So VLAN 10 is the name of our pool. Uh, the network for this one would be 192.168.10.0 with our subnet mask. And we're just going to set up the pool and then do our default router. All right, so we're going to do that three times. Now, a lot of times you'd want to do like a DNS server or some other options for your DHCP pool. Right now, we're just doing the bare minimum to get our inner VLAN routing set up. So we'll create a pool for VLAN 20, set the network here to 192.168.20.0. And then we're going to do the default router for that as well. And lastly, we'll do a pool for VLAN 30. We won't do a pool for our native VLAN because there's really no reason to be handing out DHCP addresses for your native VLAN. But that would be a bad idea to do that. All right, so we're going to call that good for now. Now, if everything was correct, we should be able to go to each of our PCs and see if they have received an IP address. Now with Packet Tracer, sometimes this doesn't always happen so quickly. Um, one thing you have to do is make sure they're all set to DHCP. See this one got an address, 10.2. Go ahead and go to PC2. Switch that to DHCP. Also got 20.2. Now one thing we didn't do is set up a DHCP reservation to reserve, oops some addresses from our DHCP pool. And so each of these computers is using just the second available IP. So we got 10.2, 20.2, and 30.2. So if we want to test our inner VLAN routing here, we can do so. We're going to ping 192.168.20.2. And you'll notice with Packet Tracer, a lot of times the first ping will fail, which it did here. But then the second three were successful. And then we can go ahead and ping 30.2. 
And then we can safely say that our InterVLAN routing config is complete. Hope you like that video. If you have any questions, let me know.